True. Nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous I had been and am. But why will you say that I am mad? The disease has sharpened my senses, not destroyed, not dulled them. Above all was the sense of hearing acute. I heard all things in heaven and in the earth. I heard many things in hell. How, then, am I mad? Hearken and observe how healthily, how calmly I can tell you the whole story. It is impossible to say how first the idea entered my brain, but once conceived it haunted me day and night. Object there was none, passion there was none. Hello? I loved the old man. It's good to see you again. He had never wronged me, he had never given me insult. For his gold I had no desire. I do take great pride in I think it was his you? eye. Oh. Yes. That's it was so this. One of his I eyes resembled that of a sense. vulture. I a pale blue eye much sun with today. a film over it. You know, it's, Whenever it's it fell upon good. me, my blood so, ran cold. Daffodils do love And so by degrees, huh? very gradually, I, do I made up my mind to take take the life of the old man and thus rid myself of the eye forever. Now, this is the point. You fancy me mad. Madmen know nothing. But you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded. With what caution, with what foresight, with what dissimulation I went to work. It took me an hour to place my whole head within the opening so far that I could see him as he lay upon his bed. And this I did for seven long nights, every night, just at midnight. Upon the eighth night, I was more than usually cautious in opening the door. Never before that night had I felt the extent of my own powers, of my sagacity. Who's there? It is nothing but the wind in the chimney. It is only a mouse crossing the floor.
took up three planks from the flooring of the chamber and deposited all between the scantlings. I then replaced the board so cleverly, so cunningly, that no human eye, not even his, could have detected anything wrong. There came a knocking at the street door. I went down to open it with a light heart. For what had I now to fear? <clears throat> Good morning, sir. We are with the Baltimore Police Department, deputed to search the premises. A shriek has been heard by a neighbor during the night, and suspicion of foul play has been reported. The shriek was my own, in a dream. Mr. Longfellow is absent in the country, but please, please, search. Search well. I led them the at length to his Harrison. chamber. This is Edith. I showed them the old man's out, treasures, so. secure, undisturbed. Check under the couch. Nothing in the bedroom. The roads are empty. This man's got nothing but a Bible. Is there any money in it? No, Edith. There's no money in the Bible. Well, sir, we apologize for disturbing your rest. Please, send our best to Mr. Longfellow when he returns. We will- Oh, Harrison, don't pain the man with such a long sentence at this hour. You're right, Edith. Only criminals deserve such sentences. Assemble no more. I admit the deed. Tear up the planks here, here, in the beating of his hideous heart. <laughs>